I think uh, in 2016, this year, we're in a marvelous age that Bob Moog would have reveled in. Uh, Bob was much more interested in controls, uh, and I refuted this idea at Con ContinueCon 2016, uh, which was about the Hawking Continuum. I spoke about stepless pitch instruments, theremin, trautonium, Um uh, continuum, uh, and so forth. This uh, uh, mytho kind of mythology of West Coast, East Coast, uh, that there was some kind of difference in... Bob Moog wasn't interested in controllers. He stuck a keyboard on and that was sufficient. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Brian Kehoe has listed, I don't know, 15, 20 different controllers, all kinds of things, which uh, certainly I could detail in a letter to you. Uh, but at any rate, <clears throat> we are in an, a very interesting uh, period of controllerism, if you will. Uh, uh, XYZ controllers Loosely patterned after the keyboard are very popular now. As a matter of fact, what have I got up here? I have an Eigen harp, which is not uh, patterned after the keyboard. Not so popular. A useful instrument, I think. But, you know, it's pretty hard to deny the uh, universality and the universal utility of keyboards. You know, uh, easily uh, controlling... Uh, and grabbing different parameters, if you will, you know, if they may they may be pitch, they may be something else. So the idea of an X Y Z controller with X generally taken to be this way, and typically assigned to pitch, and a Y taken to be this way, it can be assigned to all kinds of things, vibrato depth, the timbre, whatnot. You can assign anything to anything in modern controllerism, and Z or Z which is up and down, which is force. Uh, yes, we have uh, Roger uh, Lynn's Linstrument. We have Raleigh's Seaboard and I guess more advanced models. Uh, we have the Hawking Continuum and several, you know, that I, else, others that I've seen. Uh, I think all of them have some potential and uh, have a place, you know, for where things are done. I think the most mature expression of this is the Hawking Continuum. Uh, it has the resolution that, uh, is, that, that Raleigh's instruments don't have. Uh, and in general, uh, uh, there's a group of people kind of building up around it. it. In other words, it's not considered just to be uh, a doubling instrument. Uh, this is the bane of the synthesizer. Oh, I play uh, piano. Oh, yeah, I also play synthesizer. Well, really? Maybe synthesizer is an, its own instrument, as Jan Hammer, Tom Koster, uh, and a number of, of people of that caliber of talent discovered. Oh, this monophonic thing is something different, and I have to think about it and treat it differently than playing chords and then adding a little vibrato at the tail end of something. No. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll just make the ball statement. Uh, monophony is not a subset of polyphony. As a matter of fact, there are few polyphonic instruments, and even the keyboard is not polyphonic. It's pretty much homophonic with some possibilities of lines, you know, but a string quartet, that's, that's totally polyphonic. There are four lines. They can cross each other. They can have do anything you want, different time bases. You have so many more degrees of freedom. Uh, when you're playing, R.H. Ranger had a keyboard that would play six different timbres. Trouble of it is, music doesn't work that way. If I played six notes like this, you know, with six timbres, uh, no, it goes from one line to two lines to six to five to two to one to three. And what happens when you cross lines? Uh, you know, I mean, people just don't think these things through. If you think them through with degrees of freedom, then you realize, oh, here are the limitations, here are the possibilities. You can do certain things, you can't do other things. So uh, what I like about both the continuum, and as Joel Chatterby is very close to the Kima system. Now, Kima is not a controller. Kima is a voice, and a very powerful one. It's something like, I don't know, 18 uh, Motorola DSP chips or something in it. Very powerful. But I saw uh, at uh, the St. Cloud Dekima convention, uh, 
oh gosh, I've forgotten the fellow's name and I wish I could remember it. He actually used some things you use on game controllers. And they have a joystick and, and there's a little nib on the end of the joystick and there's a wire going down the center of the joystick and you can pull the wire up and that's Z. So you have X, Y, two joysticks and Z is this wire. He did a wonderful piece uh, with these $100 controllers. And that meant the Kima was capable of receiving through a laptop, through a Macintosh, you know, the, the intelligence that allowed this very powerful system uh, of sound uh, to be controlled by almost anything. And, uh, of course, one of the principles of the uh, continuum, Ed, uh, Edmund, uh, is also very much uh, into the Kima, you know. Perhaps the Kima is a more powerful voice at this point. The, the Continuum, I think, is the most powerful controller that we have. And what I like about either of those systems, and both of them, there's a community of musicians. You need a community. You can't just say, well, I've got this, this instrument. Even if I sell 50,000 of them in the span of history, it's not going to mean anything until there's a community and there's a literature, and I might say parenthetically, uh, manuals. <laughs> And things to teach people are a, a, a curriculum. You know, the On Mar to Know from 1928 was played at the Paris Conservatory years and years. And it was part of the curriculum. And then at Montreal, it was, you, could, you could be an ondist. You could take On Mar to Know and learn to play the On Mar to Know. You know, we don't have that kind of structure in place, really, for almost any of these synthesizers. They're sort of Play it yourself, and don't worry about the manual. Do everything empirically. And musicians have been doing things empirically a very long time. That is the way most music is played. But I submit to you that the paradigm of electronic things calls for a little more cognitive uh, approach. Uh, you're just going to be better if you understand the instrument. You're, you're going to plumb its depths a lot better. It's not like a flute. You pick it up. You learn to move your mouth and you learn to play it. And you can even do that in absence of a teacher. I think we need a new pedagogy for electronic instruments, you know, something.